Hey y'all, I'm Jason Bergeron, one of the founders of the D2 Conferences in Vienna. First off, I'd like to welcome you to our channel and ask you to please subscribe if you haven't already done so. You're probably all wondering, who is this guy? Why isn't he wearing a hat? Not gonna happen. Anyway, we've just gotten back from the Total Chaos event organized by our friends at Chaos Group. It was a great event, uh, very well organized, great speakers, and we had an absolutely fantastic time there. Over the next few days, we are gonna be releasing a number of interviews, so you're gonna to wanna to keep a lookout for that. First up, Fabio got a chance to sit down with Marek Dinko from No Emotion. Marek is a well-known guy in the industry and has provided inspiration to so many people over the years. So, enjoy the interview and look forward to the rest of our special coverage of Total Chaos. Hi guys, welcome back to the D2 channel. My name is Fabio Palvelli and today I'm together with the one and only Marek Denko. Marek? Hi. <laughs> How's it going, dude? Great. First of all, thanks a lot for taking the time for doing this. I think you and I have been trying to talk or make something happen for the past three, four years. Yes. Do you remember yes. when I first mm -hmm. got in touch with you and you were yeah. going to Mexico? Yeah, yeah. And then mm -hmm. we never managed to bring you to Vienna? You didn't ask a second time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can we make this happen sometime soon? Absolutely. Yeah. People will love to see you, man. Yeah. Um, how close are you with the archivist industry? Like, I know that at the moment you're not doing archivist work. You're, what are yeah, you Yeah, it's been a while since I like, stopped working in archivist, but not like... We just had some projects I prefer to do, you know. So these days I'm working like on uh, game cinematics and uh, advertising and product visualizations and stuff like that. Your company is based in uh, Czech, right? Yes, yeah, in Czech Republic. Yeah, we are just basically like two guys with the option of having like uh, more spaces and, like to have an office if there is a bigger project coming but uh, we work from home and, and doing our stuff from home you know uh, uh, a lot of uh, the people that watch our videos they come from the archivist industry mm -hmm. and you have had a massive influence of, on what archivist has become because your work was always pushing the boundaries yeah, that's, that's a mystery to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> there is not so much archivist in my projects, you know. Like, yeah, but you see, I, I, because... I, I know, I, maybe it's because of V-Ray, because it's, it's so, like, the users are mostly the archivist uh, guys, so... But also the work that you do on environments, like, I was looking at the making of, of your uh, Westphalia... Yeah, but it's just, like, something, like, automatic, like, I don't, don't like, consider it to be something to impress architects, you know, like, <laughs> there's just something. I guarantee you there. that architects are very impressed. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe more architecture visualizers. Yeah. Architects yeah. don't care. <laughs> it's, just, it's all out, out of focus, so. Yeah. But uh, t tell me, for instance, you know, I was listening to your uh, master class, and um, for those who weren't able to attend, a project like, you know, the Westphalia one, mm -hmm. how long does it take for you to, you know, put it into the pipeline, come up with the idea, and yeah, execute it? Yeah, it was like, like five months, maybe, like, or six, but really with the old work projects and family involved, so I don't know the, like, exact hours. Of but course. Yeah, of course. It's, I don't rush it. If I, if I had the right idea, then it's faster. <laughs> now, that's good that you're saying this because sometimes I feel the frustration when I look at your work and I'm like, okay, maybe I'll try to do something similar. And then after a couple of weeks, I want to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I don't want to kill myself, but I, I really, <laughs> the most part of it, I really like, don't enjoy anymore. Work. We were talking about it uh, yeah. yesterday, actually, motivation and so on. Yeah, that's something... Can you expand a little bit on the yeah, topic? Yeah, I think that's the part of the talent, you know, that you, you, keep, you, are, you keep going, you know, that's the part of the value. It's, uh, yeah, I started it and when I see the angle is working, composition is okay. I can then, uh, based on previous experiences, I know that uh, image could like work and have some success. And then I like doing all the flips and horizontal, vertical, you know, just to see if it still works because I, I don't see the image anymore. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it maybe after five years when I look at it again. So I, oh, so. this is, um, I think, a normal process. So I'm the, blind, I'm yeah. blind to it. But I remember that it worked when I tried it the first time. So. Uh, 
Now, you didn't start with 3D straight away. You, I remember you talking about a lot of photoshops and a lot of like... Uh... No, I started with 3D. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Photoshop, I did some Mortal Kombat. Uh, yeah, because uh, I remember you head, showing uh, that stuff. Yeah, but uh, yeah, 3D was, that was a thing back then, you know. Like... But that was uh, around what time? 1997. Yeah. How did you learn? Like, where did you get all the resources to...? Nowhere, nowhere. <laughs> Just, yeah. Friends, you know, they started to... We were really young and we, I, I was also doing the music. So some tracking software, like a fast tracker, and we, we've been doing, like, black metal stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes CG and with, you know, games and... Yeah, but I stuck with uh, 3D in the, in the end and... So the resources, so no English and... Uh, yeah, translating everything manually and or just trying to click the button to see what's, what's going on. So this kind of <laughs> torture. <laughs> <laughs> so self-inflicted. But it's, you know, they haven't felt it like this, you know, every time it's something discovered something it was nice. You know, to, oh, this is this. I was very impressed when you showed the portrait of that woman, like, you know, uh, on the on the ground. Like mm -hmm. that woman, you know, yeah, like female this. anatomy study. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, I was impressed when you said, yeah, I modeled everything by hand in 3ds Max, and I was like, oh. Yeah, at the time, the, it was so slow, everything, that you really have to detach part of the model and move the vertexes and to see it with Turbo Smooth Modifier, you know? You, yeah. you couldn't work on the whole model at the same time, then you have to attach it again, weld the vertexes, you know? Oh my God. <laughs> that, that was the thing. Yeah. It's, I, it's not like that anymore. I don't remember doing that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, this must have been like, and like, the detail of the hair, for instance, how did you manage to do that when there weren't tools? Oh, uh, it's like black geometry there with some stripes of geometry, which has some specularity on it. And maybe I did some Photoshop on it, like so really subtle thing. Yeah. And then there are some opacity planes, which are like facing camera. So you see some you know, details here and there. Yesterday I was talking about it with some other guys that, you know, are also in the industry since 25 years and they say that, you know, in, uh, in these days it has become a lot more, um, not easy, but lazy because, you know, in the past people were trying to find solutions mm -hmm. and they always had some sort of like work around workflow. Yeah, but now everything is more and more. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it's more like artistic driven. Maybe you, yeah. you can be lazy, but yeah, if you have a, just a little bit of vision, you can really realize it like faster. You know, pr produce it faster. Yeah, but I'm old school, <laughs> <laughs> so I do it six months. <laughs> but the initial idea, of course, is like a uh, quick one. Now so. tell me, you are originally from Slovakia, right? Mm -hmm. And then you moved to Czech Republic. Yeah, I studied in Czech Republic. Then I went to Italy. For yeah, a, I want to know a little months. bit about that because yeah, yeah. I'm Italian, you know, and uh, <laughs> people complain a lot about the Italian market, that there is nothing going on. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that much. I, I just work in one company there. Where did you stay? In Milan. Milan, okay. In 263 films, maybe it rings a bell. Mm. Uh, Dario Pichau, the, uh, Diren. Yes, yes. Uh, Anne Frank movie. Does, yeah. There was a lot of talented artists there. It was great. Did you learn any Italian? Oh, poco. Poco. <laughs> Porco Dio la Madonna. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> no, we're yeah, not going to beep that. It's uh, okay. It's, uh... <laughs> and from commercials, I know some like Amici Sportivi di Italia Uno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember Dodici Quaranta. Yeah, 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 of da, da. course. Oh, of I course. know some things. Yeah. No, the funniest thing there was uh, nobody was like speaking English there, you know? It was Italian, Spanish guys. Uh, Swede, you know, from around the world, and everybody was speaking like the, their English. You know? But we understood each other, and there was one guy from uh, Ireland, and nobody could understand him. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the only one speaking English. I lived there. in Ireland, and uh, Irish accent is really you, terrible. You, 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 Not you terrible, to, like you cannot understand yeah, it. That's you, it. Ha you have to listen a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, you went <laughs> from being a, a super generalist, you know, mm -hmm. doing oh. like. A, uh, anatomy, doing uh, car design, mm -hmm. uh, archives, environment, and then you focused on like uh, I think you do a lot of game assets also, right? Yeah, environments. Environments. Yeah. Yes. The environments is uh, it's uh, you have you really can be efficient and lazy at the same time, but smart lazy. When you do a character, you really have to do everything, you know, like 
I imagine modeling, unwrapping, texturing, and if if it doesn't work, you have to go back, you know. And, and I like to have the option of tweaking everything till the end, like so that I switch completely to environments and I really can work efficiently, like there. Like I don't need to unwrap every every piece of asset there. If you just work, I basically work in camera space, you know. So when <clears throat> the client provides cameras. Is the best thing which could happen. So you only cover yeah. some safe frames, you know, like some breathing area, and it's uh, yeah, that's what I like to do. So I stayed with there. Okay, so the process was basically self-assessing. You said I like this, and that's what I want to yeah, do. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Dude, somebody that wants to get into the industry. Okay, young guy. Something that you can recommend them to, to yeah, you know, to look say, out for. I don't know if it's a, if a 3D is a thing today for young kids, you know, they, they, they like YouTube. Okay, <laughs> then let's rephrase this. If your kids say, yes. Daddy, I want to do your job. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Be a doctor. I, uh, personally, I like, don't like sculpting that much, mm -hmm. even though I use the brush from time to time. Like, you know the UI stuff, like the guys from the... 3ds max like uh oh, see why shit <laughs> but when when kids ask me to do uh, they don't want to do something i just open a zbrush from them you know and set the ball and symmetry and they can like play with it you know so i think it's that's starting with 3d yeah Start <laughs> hard to sculpting, say yeah. <laughs> hard, hard to say i'm it's... trying to learn sculpting myself and i understand your uh, your uh, your point you know it's yeah, uh... i tried so many times like i started like seriously like so many times but then I, uh, I but i think it's uh, it's also a question of continuity you know like uh, there are people that you know start with zero skills and then mm -hmm. they work on a project for six months because of work and then they come out and they do amazing stuff there are a lot of great artists no no hate like, there's an so important question that's missed. Okay. I have to tell you, yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. Yes, for it. I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's expand a little bit on the on the topic of like details in your work mm -hmm. because you know the the work that you have presented with the bookshelf and the car. Yeah, it's called souvenir. Souvenir. You see it now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm gonna over. Ah, we're gonna sure. overlap it. And uh, you know, you have shown like uh, wireframes of how you scatter dust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you keep your sanity <laughs> from doing all this stuff? I mean, some of the details, you said it yourself, you don't get to see them because they're either blurred or... Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, usually the case, because uh, this time I started with different uh, like focus lengths, so, but uh, not directly, but indirectly people are asking me if it's not just easier to do it in 2D, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I could, definitely, and I'm not uh, looking up to be like super efficient in my personal work. Of course, the professional work is a different story. The, there I have to be efficient, of course. Understandable, uh, and, yeah. But yeah, in my personal artworks, I'm just trying to do it in 3D, and maybe that's the reason why I'm sitting here, you know, <laughs> and why I'm having talks. And it, yeah, building a portfolio was like, always the main, maybe, business of it, like, it sells. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so efficiency versus time, you know. So all those details, like the dust, it's not that crazy to do. Yeah. Really, it's just a few clicks away. I understand you your point, yeah. Thing. It's just that, you know, it's um, it takes, I think, a, a huge deal of observation, rather, you know, because mm -hmm. in, uh, in a traditional um, yeah, the, the, the media, you wouldn't think of it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but the macro shots, yeah. I mean, if you go to detail, there's a lot of subsurface and uh, a lot of dust and mm -hmm. imperfections which usually you cannot even see like in the scenes like this you just feel, feel details he here and there and uh, there is no dust here but i would try but you know for, <laughs> for an element the smallest dust mm -hmm. which kind of material do you use some refractive thing but i don't like there is no like super settings i just render a region and see uh, looks good uh, i don't know so i put a little bit different uh, uh, properties, glossy refraction or something like that. It's, just, it's some, yeah, something white with refraction, mm, glossy I understand. refraction. Yeah, that's a very good yeah, way to approach The only thing you it. have to test it is if it works in the light and also in the shadow. Mm -hmm. Also, you have, to, you have ah, two yeah, things to consider. Ah, yeah, because it could uh, glow, yeah. actually. Yeah, it could, uh, it, it could not look good, you know, like yeah, yeah. you set up the shader for the light lit part and uh, in, in the shadow it looks like something weird. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. is not there, like it's not dust. So. But it works in VRA pretty well, no, no problems. 
It's straightforward, like stupid shit that are really like. One last question. Mm -hmm. You are an inspiration for a lot of people. Who is your inspiration? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Confess. <laughs> no one. No one in <laughs> I look at my own work <laughs> and I get no, like not, not, yeah, no, yeah, I look at my own photos, you know. Okay, so that, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the part of the inspiration when I'm sorting photos sometimes. Yeah. I don't want to sell this story like it's a true story, but sometimes, okay? I, I, I had like few images in the past I did from pictures. And I just go and see, there's nothing... You don't, you don't search for it, like, I don't search for it, like, actively, like, mm -hmm. oh, I need something to, to do. Yeah, it, it, this is also another stunning thing. And yeah, and if you, if, you do, if you do one image per year, you don't really... I don't, I don't need, like, 10,000 inspiration a year, you know? I just have one and I, then I can focus on this one and I don't have to care. Yeah, sure. you know? yeah but the like, inspiration, like influences from all CG masters, you know, even today Neil Blevins, mm -hmm. he, he was great, like his CG education part of his web is yeah. really great. What was his name? Steven, the guy from Singapore, Steven. I don't want to say Sega, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think I know which one you mean. It's the not butterfly the... woman on the yes, cover yes, of yes, Expos. Yes. Those were like uh, the first guys, like uh, CG guys that I like admired. I checked some paintings, but nothing really. I have a reference folder on the desktop. Every time I see something nice, I just put it in there. And another good inspiration is that uh, sometimes I see a thumbnail on the website. And I see that this is so, so cool image, you know, mm -hmm. and then I open it, it's completely something, completely yeah. different, you know, it's not what I thought, so that's sometimes... Uh, Scale, it's uh, important. Yeah, yeah. So, small things, really. Small. Marek, thanks a lot for your time, I really appreciate it. Guys, I really hope thank that you, you found you. this uh, talk inspirational. I want to thank you again for taking the time. Um, I guess I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye. Bye.